Hey, welcome back to this edition of Commission Ed. Reed, what are we here to talk about today? Today we're gonna to get into the nitty gritty of what it takes to actually get commissioned. In previous videos, we've talked about you know some broad strokes on the specifics, but today we're gonna to get into the actual Title 10 US code. We're gonna go through the requirements, and more importantly, what are the vehicles that you have to engage with in order to achieve those objectives? Yep, so you mentioned it, Title 10 US code. That is where these, these requirements are defined. We've mentioned them in, in other videos. We encourage you to go look at them up there, but let's get into more detail about it. Title 10 US Code Section 532 says that there are four requirements for you to become an Air Force officer. Yep, the first is you have to be a citizen of the United States and you have to possess good moral character. Those are the top two and those are universal and they're not gonna change. And if you have questions about those, reach out to a recruiter, you know, look up with a ROTC instructor, someone of that nature can help you get into those details. But we're gonna talk about the next two more today. Yeah, it's really the next two that drive a lot of what happens inside of the different commissioning sources, which we are gonna discuss here shortly. But the third requirement to become an Air Force officer is that you meet the physical qualifications for active service. Reed, what are those physical qualifications as defined by the Air Force? Well, as defined by the Air Force, there's two primary components. You have the medical side of things, which we're not gonna get a whole lot into because uh, not a doctor. Yeah, Colin, me either, not, not a, a doctor. doctor. Okay, so we're not gonna cover that kind of stuff, but we are gonna talk about the physical fitness requirements. Everybody's favorite subject, PT. All right, so the first and foremost, there is a physical fitness assessment, which right now is composed of three components. And by the way, this is changing all the time. We'll provide links in the description below to where you can get official documentation on all of this. But starts out with a minute of push-ups, a minute of sit-ups, and then a 1.5 mile run. Yep, do as many repetitions as you can with the push-up in one minute. Same thing with the sit-up, as many repetitions as you can. And this is not a typical sit-up. It's very strictly defined by the Air Force. And you can find all of that information in AFI 36-2905. Again, the, a link to the document itself will be in the description. And then running a mile and a half as fast as you can. Yep. And as long as you meet the minimum requirements for all of these components, and that, that means you've passed the physical fitness assessment, you've passed the PFA. And this is an essential part of your Air Force career. It's going to, you're going to be tested at a minimum on an annual basis. You'll also be tested almost any time you go to professional military education or any other technical training, you have to pass a physical fitness assessment before that can begin. Yep, and that's gonna be true at the commissioning sources. Well, before we get there, that gets into the fourth requirement to receive a, a, a commission as an Air Force officer which is that you meet the service specific requirements in order to receive that commission. Well, where does that all happen? It happens at the commissioning sources. Reed, what is a commissioning source? Commissioning source is an institution that the Air Force has given the authority to commission officers on behalf of the United States Air Force. And there are three primary ways in which Air Force officers are commissioned. They attend the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They attend officer training school at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, or they attend their various institutions of higher education at universities across the nation and participate in the Reserve Officer Training Corps commissioning program. The Air Force Academy gets priority number one for, uh, for jobs, for opportunities, for promotion, all those kinds of things that come later after you receive a commission. And then after that is Air Force ROTC, receives priority number two. And then last up is officer training school. It is the flexible partner in the commissioning, uh, in the in the set system of commissioning and therefore receives the, the lowest priority. Yeah. So let's go in depth a little bit about what these three different sources are, why we have three different sources, because there is a method to the madness and who, who are the people that that is most targeted to? Because that'll really help you, our audience, determine well, what options are available to you and which one should I pick and why? So we'll start with the Air Force Academy. The Air Force Academy is considered our premier commissioning source. Uh, it is not only a commissioning training experience, but it's also a full four-year university education. So this is targeted primarily at people who are graduating high school and also who are excelling in all areas of physical fitness, leadership, character, and 
really, this is a, a whole airman concept of the people that are recruiting there. But kind of think of this more along the lines of recruiting Ivy League talent. Really sharp folks attend our service academies. Yeah, it's a very competitive uh, program to get into. Only, uh, they only accept about a thousand a year, which it, by contrast, Air Force ROTC, which is the next commissioning source, is the widest funnel for getting officers into the Air Force. There are 145 different detachments serving over 400 different universities around the country, including Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. You can go to the university of your choice. Hopefully it has a detachment there. And while you're pursuing your bachelor's degree, you also receive your military training. Yep. Now, the last of these is officer training school. And this one is the flexible partner as Colin described, but it's intended target audience are those who have already attained their education and gotten that bachelor's degree. And it's also targeted at people who are direct commissioning. So these are our lawyers, medical professionals, our staff, uh, our chaplains, and other people that come in with a specific profession. But it's also the commissioning source for the overwhelming majority of our prior enlisted uh, folks who are training, trading in their stripes uh, for bars. As you can see, there are a wide different, there, there are a number of different ways that you can receive a, a commission. And the process of, be, uh, of receiving that commission can very, can uh, very widely and be very difficult to navigate. For this reason, we are, pro we are providing this information and we also uh, have links in the description to where you can get in contact with a recruiter or a, uh, an ROTC instructor, someone who is able to best answer your questions for you so you know which path you should follow. And pay attention to our YouTube channel. We're gonna have specific episodes dedicated to each of these different accession sources so we can get into the real details about who can go to the academy and why. How do they reach out to the right recruiter? Is my background and education going to get me into the Air Force? We're gonna cover all of that in future videos, so stay tuned. Yeah, so make sure that you like and subscribe, follow us on all of our social media platforms, tune in uh, anywhere that you can find us so that you can get the information that you need. Thanks for joining us today on Commission Ed.